Excuse me, I have my earphones in and my microphone off. Hello. Very disorganized, Ross. But hey. Back post dinner now to work on our tokens. And uh, belly's full of peri peri chicken. Very satisfied. Sent out some call outs on Twitter and Facebook. And we'll see if anybody tunes in. Otherwise, you'll just be listening to me talk to myself, future viewers who may be watching the stream recordings. I'm sorry this is a, such a bad time. Like it's 7.40 p.m. over here. I'm not even sure if uh, my stream settings are okay here. Can I change this? Hey, Starchify. Thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Thanks for coming to say hi before you take off. Uh, perhaps before you take off, you can tell me if it's super stop start. Kind of looks that way on my end. I think I may have to restart the stream with a lower output. How are we looking? Do I sound okay? A smarter man would test this beforehand. Mm -hmm. I'll take your... Oh, I sound pretty good? How about, like, the frame rate? Because on my end it looks pretty bad. Although I got a green light down here on OBS, so... Perhaps I'll stick with it. I'll see how we go. I have in um, another window my stream open, and it looks pretty low frame rate, which worries me. But yeah, it's it's an impromptu impromptu stream as I just get some work done, basically, and see who wants to stop by to chat. Bless you. Bless you. I feel like my webcam's like a little bit too intimate. I suppose I can always make that smaller. Frame rate is pretty good. Okay, I'll take your word for it. I do have a green light. One of these days I'll learn how to use OBS and Twitch and I'll figure all this out. But in the meantime, at least I've set up the webcam with a little circular mask on it. So, that looks nice. I don't want to dedicate too much time because I could, I know I could spend days and days perfecting it. Just like anything else. I'm a real perfectionist with these sort of things. So I just want to spend like an hour or like half an hour every day making little tweaks and changes to the stream such as the webcam mask. Uh, just so that it's it's improving little by little rather than me falling behind on my work and dedicating a week to it as I'd love to do as I've done before with like my website every now and then I'll overhaul the, uh, the CSS make it look nicer on certain pages but anyway, this lobster man is taking far too long. Let's get him done. A little less talking. A little more action. Ever so satisfying. Pressing that fill button. Hammerhead shark dude. I just need to warm up a little bit and then I'll get these smashed out real quick. Right now, I'm a little bit clumsy still. Oh, 
Oh, thank you. Yeah, the uh, philosophy I go with with my website, keep it super simple, um, easy to use, first priority, and then make it look pretty if it doesn't subtract from that experience. <clears throat> and make it run fast. I'm still working on that. I want to make it load much faster. Like I used to have animations on it uh, where little elements would kind of slide into view. It'd be very fancy to look at, but the user experience, it slowed things down. And I can't have that. Uh, I am using OBS Studio, I believe. OBS version 23. Uh, it does the job well. And I got a little green light in the bottom right hand corner, which uh, seems like everything's going okay. Okay, have a good one. Start your fire. Thanks for tuning in. See you another time. So I see five other viewers online now. I'd be curious to know where you're all from to be tuning in at this time. I suppose it's morning in America. I know the vast majority of visitors to my website are from America. So I expect the same to be true for Twitch, except for the fact that I'm always streaming at awkward times. Uh, being in Australia, it's 7.46 p.m. here. So it's very rare, like uh, I'm usually streaming in the middle of the night for most of you folk. But we have a few fun Europeans popping in. Or I don't think we've ever seen an Australian. This Twitch channel is still super new, so uh, I can't really make broad statements yet, can I? Like we're talking not yet a week old. I think it'll be a week old on Wednesday. That's tomorrow. Almost a week old. Here's a real true to form Sahuagin. Like Sharkmen are my personal flavor of Sahuagin in my campaign. Just upright bipedal sharks. But so I thought I'd throw in a hammerhead and a great white variant of those, but other than that, we've got... What is this mess over here? Ooh. Other than that, we've got a nice little selection of classic Sahuagin with fins on their forearms and little fin mohawks and that sort of thing. And the webbed feet. Uh, if you've seen my past YouTube videos slash Twitch streams, when I was drawing these guys, they just had generic claw feet like our shark fell over here. But then I, I paid attention, started paying attention to the source material and saw the webbed feet and thought, I'll give that a shot. Probably can't pull it off, but I'll give it a shot. And lo and behold, it worked out pretty, pretty nice. I think it does look a lot more amphibian than the claw feet. Plus, if I'm trying to make a classic Sahuagin token, then I may as well uh, go all the way. And this guy is more of a Kuatoa, isn't he? Uh, until yesterday, I'd never heard of Kuatoa. Pardon me, I probably shouldn't say that out loud on a, when my streams tag D and D, but. It's true, I didn't know there were frog slash piranha people in classic TND until I looked it up and then I'd accidentally drawn this piranha themed one who kind of doubles as a Kuatoa. Uh, he used to have a tail, but I, I ripped that off when I saw that Kuatoa don't have tails. So. We have Kuatoa now, and I think we have another variation here. He's got more fins on him. We'll get to him in just about two minutes. And then this guy's done. 
just streaming for an hour tonight as I would like to spend some time today relaxing. As relaxing as this is, I'm uh, doing it alone. And I'd like to spend some time with my loved ones. So just streaming for an hour tonight, or rather 40 more minutes, and then I'll take off. I did do a lot of work today off stream um, because it was kind of intermittent work in between other things and I didn't want to stop and start the stream a hundred times in one day. So I thought I'd stream now when I've got a nice block of work to do. But in the future I suppose there's no harm in streaming, I just won't put any call outs out if I'm going to stop start the stream a bunch. <laughs> hey Prupra. Yeah, well the handy thing about my stream is uh, it doesn't take much of your attention to follow along. So you can do your homework and follow along. That's what I recommend. And in fact when I'm not streaming that's how I do it. I, I uh, catch up on my YouTube videos or Tune into other streams. Yeah, you like him? I'm, I like uh, this guy, is one of my favorite, the guy we're filling in now. Very simple pose, but he's got a fun design, I think. I like these two wings. We were joking on the stream the other day that they look like a Hussar win, a Hussar Sahugan. Just with fins instead of feathers. So it probably makes no sense like with fluid dynamics, with swimming around. Like do these move and propel him? That's a question for the DM. I just draw the tokens. But the design is pretty cool. I like the design. I like the silhouette. It's fun. If you kind of look at just the silhouette, it kind of looks like ears, doesn't it? I mean, maybe there are just big ears coming out of the back of his head rather than running down his back. Next up, we have our big forearm, Sahugan. I like this guy's design too, just because he's got four arms. He's very distinct. One of those tokens I started thinking this is going to be a real puzzle getting forearms to uh, fit, but it worked out and it didn't take nearly as much puzzling as I thought it would. So we've got seven viewers now. Uh, do any of you have any frame rate issues? It's hard to tell because I'm so inexperienced with Twitch. I have a green light on OBS, but still uncertain. Michelle Plucker, I'd love to hear how it goes. Uh, which one of these tokens are catching your eye in particular? So Hogan, or might I suggest Gaping More of Death? Or I really like the way our Chul, still not sure how to pronounce it, our Chul came out. He's fun. I almost forgot this guy's tail. Just fill that in. Okay, good to know. Uh, Michelle says the stream looks fine. So it must just be my little stream preview. Not bothering to keep up. Uh, I can never really tell because in this corner of Australia, the our internet is as bad as they say, world famously bad internet. So only recently has streaming been a viable option for me, because the last place that I lived, I couldn't upload while my brother was using the internet. Uh, we'd have to take turns. It was that bad. And that was just last year. <laughs> I 
Yeah, the Gaping Maw of Death uh, is extra fun. We have the Gaping Maw, of course, and we got some Grasping Tentacles, too. So my idea is this long tentacle will lash out onto the deck of the ship. Let me zoom out a little. And then this Grasping Tentacle will reel your players in, and then this Grasping Tentacle will deposit them into the Gaping Maw. So. It's a nice little series of tentacles, and that, that happened by just by accident. I'd be interested to know, because I encountered this problem um, just during my last session that I ran, how you guys handle like certain death scenarios like that. If one of your players ended up in this gaping maw of death, um, how would you proceed? Would they keep taking bite damage until they hit zero hit points and then just play it out rules as written? Or would, they, would you give them like a skill check to get out? Or I suppose you should leave these kind of decisions up to the player and then improvise, right? But uh, the situation I had was a player fell uh, through a hole in the ground and into an enormous pit of lava. Uh, and I, I just ruled at the time. First of all, I gave him a check to clear the gap, which he failed. I gave him a check, a dexterity save, to grab onto the ledge, which he failed spectacularly. And then so he was, after two checks, two failed checks, he was plummeting into that lava. Um, but I had, in my kind of description describing the scene, mentioned a bunch of mechanical gears and chains and pulleys and stuff below the entire platform. So I said, well, luckily below you there's a series of chains that you could attempt to grab onto before you hit the lava's surface and begin sinking to certain death and he rolled uh, like a 16 on that one so I, I ruled that he tumbled off one chain failed to get a grip but the next chain that came up he uh, grabbed onto it and funny enough we had to call the session there so in continuity, his character is still hanging there to this day. And uh, mm, two weeks from now, we should know what becomes of him. <clears throat> There's also the fact of a giant snake looming over him. Uh, and he's completely exposed on that chain. So we'll see what happens. Thanks, Mr. Doodles. Glad you like it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Pra, pra. Uh, give them opportunities to save themselves. And if the dice... I, f I figure it should take a couple of bad rolls before a character dies, right? So give them a couple checks. Just make something up. And then if they fail three in a row, then you know, fate has made its decision. Yeah, right. Like a swallow check. Maybe just a series of, for the gaping maw, a series of contested grapple checks to like avoid being swallowed further and further down. Um, And I suppose lots of classes have teleports too. That's kind of my style for DMing is I'll think up something immensely deadly on paper and then I'll just roll with it. And usually my characters have some tool in their arsenal that completely makes it far too easy. Such as uh, my two like frequent players are a bard with polymorph and a druid so all that shape-shifting 
when they can turn into a tiny little spider or a flying eagle or an immensely strong gorilla like just those three tools can pretty much trump any puzzle I throw at them so my kind of strategy is to lure out those spells uh, in a way that makes them feel clever for using them earlier in the encounter slash dungeon slash session so that they don't have it later when the real puzzle begins so hopefully they're not watching this no i know for a fact they're not yeah that's true especially when you have more than one person at the table like on paper you think if a player falls into that gaping more they're done for but at the actual table when you got mm, four to six people brainstorming how to save them yeah they, they, they've got a good chance of survival have I ever hmm. <laughs> yeah uh, check for the gaping mall to see if they like the taste of the player. Yeah, but that's some good improvising. Here's our chul. Not sure how to pronounce that. I'm just going with chul. Cthul. It's not a cthul, that's something different, isn't it? I just want to say cthul because he's got the tentacle face. And let's move on to some mundane sharks to wrap this step up. Sharky. See, I feel like I've warmed up a bit and my lines are more precise now. I don't have to fuss so much. I can pretty much get them on the first go. I've set my line art to semi-transparent just slightly so that I can make sure that I'm filling the shape entirely whilst not spilling it out over the edge but later on that will be like so but right now we're just drawing like this this is my favorite kind of shark hammerhead shark well my favorite kind of shark is the bipedal shark but my favorite Shark Shark is the hammerhead. Right after saying I warmed up, I go and spill outside the lines. This is a very Pirates of the Caribbean monster set isn't it between the undead we have and the kraken with the tentacle beast oh um, yeah the tentacle beast too the that kind of evokes davy jones doesn't it oh, my favorite uh, mundane creature is this giant eel he just came out so right Mm, I just go straight to drawing pru pru. I don't warm up except that for a while after I start um, slow -er. um, that that goes for this easy stuff which literally anyone could do so long as they know how Photoshop works but for actual for these drawings for the actual drawings which take some artistic thinking uh, and some finesse with the lines. Uh, my warm-up period is basically just doing all my drafting at once. So before I put these lines down, I'll draft out a very sketchy version of the pose and get the pose right. And that you can kind of see that process in one of my stream highlights. 
Uh, and that, because I don't have to be pre precise, and I'm just working with composition. Uh, it's a good warm-up and it actually makes progress towards the end goal. Quite a thin tail, huh? This is the true test of my my control. Did I miss? No. This guy's so simple. I could probably have gotten away with the uh, auto select tool. Here we are. We've just got one to go. We've got our Mr. Aboleth, which kind of borrowed the mandible kind of structure of manta ray. Uh, seemed right to me. Looks kind of alien. Yeah, especially if I take a break from art. Uh, like uh, sometimes I get all of the drawing part done early in the month and then I just do this kind of art kind of the uh, busy work no skill required art for the rest of the month but then the next month when I wrap back around to drawing stuff even just in a month's period I can feel the rust and it takes a little bit of warm-up should uh, <clears throat> be more mindful of my stream and kind of keep things from disappearing behind my oversized webcam. This tentacle, does that make sense? Oh, it kind of goes this way. Right, it's this tentacle that makes less sense. It goes, disappears here, and then I suppose it goes boom. Over here, it makes enough sense. So if you enjoy this kind of um, relaxed stream just watching and listening to my train of thought as I do my work then please do hit the follow button so that you're notified when I start a stream because I I do plan on streaming at least an hour every day and it's nice having having input and people to bounce ideas off and just conversation as I draw. Oof. Thanks for tuning in. I'm interested to know too if you all came here from my Facebook and Twitter posts or if you found this on some kind of Twitch category page. Still working out how Twitch works and where people come from. Sometimes I'll start a stream without any announcements and still get one or two viewers. Facebook, right. Thought so, thought so. Hmm, interesting. And then my next question is, do you watch a lot of streams? Or is this kind of uh, trying something new? Just saw my post and thought, hey, I'll give it a click. I'm 
trouble I have with tokens is deciding whether I want to give them my own flavor or just go with the uh, kind of the 5e canon and follow the art that they have in the monster manual because I know a lot of players will just want the default a lot of DMs I mean will just want to go with the um, kind of the vanilla monster so like my uh, Sahugan here, this is very Monster Manual Sahugan. This guy even more so, but my other ones like this one, the Piranha Men, uh, and especially the Shark Men. Um, I'm not sure if they'll see as much action because they're kind of their own thing as far as I know. There's, there's probably Shark Men in some manual somewhere. Ah, thanks, thanks guys for your input. I do appreciate it. This Twitch channel is a side project of mine. I just figure if I'm drawing, I may as well be streaming. So, main project is keeping up with my Patreon release schedule. And then the fun little side project is trying to grow a Twitch channel. Oh, that didn't feel right. Oh, no, it's okay. Did we just, we just finished? Nice, check it out. We have masked in our line art. I'm going to remember to press save like a responsible artist. I'm going to accidentally minimize my window. Sorry about that. And I think next step, let's, Hmm. I'm feeling a bit fatigued, like uh, I was thinking I'll start throwing shadow down, like here. But that takes actual thought to do. Whereas I am rather sleepy after just recently having dinner, so I think I'll keep the shadow for perhaps just after my morning coffee tomorrow when uh, my creative juices are flowing. Um, but for now, we will block in colors. And now being just the next 20 minutes because, because um, yeah, I'm gonna take off after that. So let's start with pretty much arbitrarily choosing this. I'm sorry, you can't see the dialogue boxes that I'm playing with right now unfortunately, and I've done something with my OBS. Give me a second. But I'm uh, playing around with colors right now. So I'm going to start with skeleton bone colors. And lucky for my method, that's a horrible sentence, but my method grants the ability to at any point change this color completely. So I am not bothering with getting the colors right. I'm just diving in and blocking in color areas. And this color area is our bare bone for our skeletons. Uh, this step, just blocking in colors, is so much fun. Mindless, yet satisfying. Seeing the tokens come to life. We have a bony leg here. I like this guy because he's uh, deliberately like half and half, half skeleton, half armory stuff. And he's got a peg leg, which is always fun. This guy's not got much bone at all showing. Yeah, my coloring is mask based, especially the tokens, which I need to remember to post this every time I start token stream. The eventual home of these tokens will be on my token editor, my web based token editor, which I'll link in Twitch chat now. 
so that you can have a play with it. Right now I've got a selection of 20 hero tokens in there. And uh, this is my first foray into monster tokens too. But the idea is you'll be able to custom pick all the colors on these tokens. Should you choose, otherwise you can just go with the default colorations. And fill that in. Please excuse my creaky chair. Yeah, uh, by the way, if you're watching on mobile, that token editor won't work very well yet. I have a few tweaks to add in, and then it will work well on mobile. It will work at all on mobile right now. Not much to do, sorry. Let's go next, now that our bone layer is down, I'll use this color for a kind of fleshy skin. Uh, starting with our sea hag, even though she's going to have a greenish skin, we're just going to use this for now because the colors aren't yet important. I think this just takes me back to my childhood when uh, in order to get me to stay at school and not cry all day long as a little kid, as a little five-year-old, four, four-year-old, my mum would draw me a picture before she dropped me off at school and say, Ross, just have a seat over here, just relax and color this in. And that would distract me until the school day started. And even to this day, it, uh, it's like a cathartic, kind of calming experience. So while we're here with the sea hag, I want to finish her off. Let's brighten that up a bit. <laughs> Good parenting, I'm glad you think so. I mean, it, it led me here, so I'm, I'm happy my artistic tendencies began early. Yeah, so these colors do not play well with each other yet. But later on, later on they will. We're just blocking in big color blocks right now. And while we're here, I'll make a layer for fins. Excuse me, chair. We got other fins, don't we? Let's uh, keep all the fins on one layer. I feel like this guy, this guy should have some back fins, but too late for that. Oh, I want to do kelp. Should we combine the kelp and the hair layer? I think so, we will, because exactly one of these tokens has hair, and it's the sea hag, who is described in the monster manual as having kelp-like hair. So I can get away with this. Is that a skull up there? I think that's his skull. Yeah. Maybe a tentacle. Maybe I'll change it later. So this guy's entire cloak is made of kelp. That's his gimmick. Which means all of this is going to be blocked in. All of this. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, he's a fun, he's got a fun design. 
And what were we working on? We were working on the fins. Ah, but we had some more kelp. I just like colouring in kelp. I noticed on my stream highlights that this stylus of mine is actually quite noisy. Like this microphone I have here picks up a lot of background noise. So maybe it's about time I invested in one of those snowball mics that everyone's using. Or maybe I'm a few years behind on what microphone is the best. It's really like this. Looks cool. Should we fill in the webbing of his toes? Sure. We'll leave it like this for now. How are we going for time? I got 10 minutes to go. Then I'll take off. And then this one should be like a swoosh over his head. It's probably a more efficient way to go about this, but I mean, at the end of the day, it'll get done. It's past the time of day where I can really be very optimized with my workflow. Probably hear to my voice. These webbed feet I might change later, but for now, I think they'll be okay. Do these count as fins? I guess, yeah. Spines slash fins. He's the only guy with spines, so he can he can share that layer with everyone else. Mr. Little, welcome to the stream. We are just uh, filling in our colors, coloring in these tokens, just with the base colors, nothing too advanced at all. Uh, later on, we're going to give these guys a, like a shadow, a shadow layer, but for now, we're just blocking in colors and right this very moment we're blocking in the fin colors and this is going to swoop over like that and that's that's all oh almost missed this bit Aha, uh -huh, Scottimus Prime from Facebook. Welcome, welcome. Scottimus Prime. It's ringing a bell. It is. Is that, a, is that a nickname or do you use that on Facebook? Because I know a couple Scots, but I don't, I, I've never met the Prime Scott, so it's, it's an honor. Got right here and the little fins. I like these little crab like fins. It helps with the composition and it, it makes him look cute. And I think every deadly beast needs at least a few elements of cuteness. Hmm. Thanks for saying so, Scott. Um, I am about to wrap up. We always seem to have a surge in viewers when I'm about to wrap up, but sadly it's true. Oh, we've got plenty of fins on our Ableth. Yeah, I'm just streaming for another five minutes because it's getting real late here and I am running out of steam. But tomorrow is Wednesday, right? So tomorrow, 
I'm going to try and do a morning stream so that uh, the Americans amongst you have a chance of tuning in. There'll probably be a nighttime stream as well. Maybe maybe that's what I'll do as a morning stream and a night stream and do the work that isn't really streamable in the middle. And then squeeze in some meals and family time. I don't know, I'm sure I'll find space somewhere for those things. Just woke up, so are you in America, Scott? <laughs> I know, Pru -pru, I, I'm, I'm just making a joke of it, but really, I'm, I don't do nearly enough work. Uh, I've done, this is like a major work day for me today, and I've done about two, two or three hours, that's all. So it's been a pretty chill day. Honestly, I spent most of the day walking around town with my girlfriends and eating stuff oh, and drinking coffee. I had two of those today. So it's been a pretty chill day. And then this is my guilty squashing in of the work at the very end of the day, period. Is this a fin on his back? I'm not sure. Should it be? No, not a fin. I dub the not a fin. Animated tokens. I've never tried animating anything. It seems like it's it's a whole skill set I have not delved into yet. Okay, we've got a skin layer already. I'm going to use this skin layer on our gaping maw for the inside of his tentacles where all the suction cups are. Yeah, and these are just color blocks. None of the colors are final, especially not this ugly color. Did I forget a layer here? Maybe. I mean a line. Maybe. Okay. All right. So we have got some Americans tuning in. Uh, what What is the time over there? Varies greatly, doesn't it? Big place. Here it is 8.30 p.m. 8.30 right so you are on the precise other side of the world um, plus or minus depending on daylight savings adjustments I suppose 630 Ooh, that's an early morning for you huh Ah, oh, I remember what I was going with here. Denmark, 2.30 p.m., that's, that's a nice time. Not too late, not too early. I think we're going to finish up gaping more. Um, just the skin block. And then I'm going to call it a night. But uh, like, I, like I said before, if you like this sort of stream, if you'd like to tune in another time, please don't neglect to hit that follow button. As I don't, I very rarely do I put out call, call outs on Twitter and Facebook like I did tonight. Usually I just leave it to whoever sees the Twitch notification to tune in. But every now and then, I, when I feel like reaching out to a new crowd, I'll uh, make a post somewhere. Just a very relaxed stream, me doing my thing and giving you the opportunity to, to watch if, if you'd like that. Oh, off to work. That makes a lot of sense. Have a good work day, Scott. Enjoy. <coughs> Excuse me. Block there. Let's 
So the question on my mind, excuse me, that's, that's finished time, but I'll finish off this color block first. The question on my mind is if these colors are going to feel balanced on our Kraken body. Uh, because I've tried to split flesh side and hide side of his tentacles to be kind of half half even but it may not work out that way we shall see in fact I'm pretty sure there's going to be more flesh side just seeing as they're all curled that way away And just to be different, this one's curling the other way. The bend, kind of bunched up flesh there. This one swings around in a fun way. Thanks, Goliath. It's my pleasure. I greatly enjoy making these maps and hearing that they're enhancing other people's games is a very significant icing on the cake. So I'm glad to hear it. I think we are done here. Uh, yeah, you know what, uh, I guess we have to finish off the rest of the Kraken Beast, just these little bits. Since we're on such a roll. <laughs> and of course, the, the moments before I call it quits is when we see a surge in viewers. This just seems to be the way Twitch works. I'm like pretty sure when they detect the word leaving soon, that's when they start promoting your stream to everyone. Smart, huh? Then it keeps you going longer. Devious. No, it's probably nothing like that. It's just, just chance. But I do find it humorous. But yes, to everyone who has recently joined us, um, I've just been coloring in these tokens. There's still a long way to go, so please expect another stream early tomorrow. It's 8.30 p.m. here in Australia. So if you'd like to see more of this kind of stuff, there's a big follow button somewhere on Twitch. I'm very new here, so I couldn't tell you where, but best of luck. Eight thirty there too. Yeah, yeah. So for me, it's my last opportunity of the night to have something to eat before bed. Oh, I don't like to eat anything after nine p.m. So that's what the alarm was for. It was telling me to eat something, and then I'm gonna go play some Spider-Man on the PlayStation with the girlfriend, which I've been looking forward to. But I will be back in the morning and probably this time slot tomorrow night too. So if this is your only opportunity, then even more a reason to hit that follow button. But we are lining in the last of our tentacles for this tentacle filled night. So let me zoom out and give a bit of a teaser. Please excuse this whole mess on the left hand side. That's just some kind of incompatibility with Photoshop and OBS. But uh, we've got our Kraken Beast, we've got some sharks, an eel and an aboleth, all large size. We've got a chew, 
Kthu, still not sure how to pronounce it. Sea Hag. Five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six flavors of Sahuagin. Uh, another crab arbitrarily put in there because I like them. And some pirate themed skeletons. All far from done, all needing shading and a bunch of other colors, which I'll do tomorrow. But thanks for tuning in, everyone. Thanks for all the input tonight, making things much more enjoyable for me and all the viewers, uh, giving me things to talk about. And I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good day slash night. And that's it. Bye-bye.